Hi guys, this is Harveen. I have the Nikon S7000 with me. If you want to know about the specs of the device, check the video I made before. I'll leave a link in the description below and a card up there. I've used the device for 2 weeks, took some 500 plus images and near to 20 videos. And here's my complete review of what I feel about the camera. Build quality. For the price point, I believe this is a well constructed point and shoot device. It feels solid in the hand and you can toss it in your bag with other items without any worries. The mode dial was a bit hard to operate in the beginning but it has loosened with time. The buttons feel tactile and easy to use. The display quality is not so good, it's just functional. Ease of use. Being a point and shoot camera, you don't have much to learn about taking images. It switches on easily but I wish it could be a little more faster. I like the placement of the video record button as it's easily accessible if you want to capture a video. The main problem I faced with the Nikon S7000 was the focusing. In broad daylight it seemed to function very well. However, it was a pain to use it in low light and even under cloudy conditions. On the other hand, the macro mode was quite impressive. I could almost touch the object with the lens and still produce a very good shot. Do keep in mind that you have to switch to macro mode to do this, otherwise it simply refuses to focus. The menu. Let's go through the menu. This first one is photo settings. You can choose resolution from the image mode. The highest resolution is 4608 by 3456. You can also choose white balance, capture mode, ISO sensitivity. You can set the range for ISO which is a good one. AF area mode can be changed according to your needs. So is the case with autofocus mode. Next comes the video options. You can capture videos at 1080p 60i that is interlace mode and 30p. I would suggest you to use it at 1080p 25fps as I found it to be better than every other option. You can control VR and AF mode also. The wind noise reduction provided is no good. In connectivity settings you can set up Wi-Fi and connect it to your smartphone. If your phone is equipped with NFC you can use that too. In the camera settings you can set time zone and date. When you connect it to your smartphone, there's a provision to sync time and date. You can also set the brightness of the monitor and so on. If you want your pictures to have a date, you can do so. It's better to keep photo via on and AF assist on auto. I've set the digital zoom off because it's better to use the maximum optical zoom and crop it further if you decide so. If you find the button sound and shutter sound annoying, you can simply turn it off using these options. Before you start using your camera for the first time, format the memory card. Image quality. The overall quality of the images are good, but there is overexposure in the images. This seems to be a problem even in well lit conditions. The image sometimes look washed out as a result of this, but it's easily fixable in editing program like Lightroom or maybe even free programs that you can find in mobile phone. The ability to retain details is good for a camera at this price range. Zooming in up to 75 or 80 percentage, maybe even 85 percentage can be usable. At 100 percentage, sometimes the images tend to be pixelated. So if you crop your image for further use, it's advised to keep it below 90 percentage so that it produces good images. Color accuracy is pretty good and many of the cameras nowadays lack it. They tend to oversaturate images, but I like the color accuracy on this device. In low light conditions, the camera lacks the ability to retain details, especially in shadow regions. If you have a tripod, set the ISO to 125 or 200 and capture the image to get clear shots in low light conditions. As I've mentioned before, macro board is one thing that really impressed me. But trying to get a macro shot without the mode on is impossible to achieve. The optical zoom works really well but struggles to focus if you are zooming in on shadows. Using the digital zoom will take away the clarity of the images. Low light is really a disappointment, so let's talk about flash. In short, it's not something that you'd want to use unless you are in a situation where you are forced to use it. The flash is a bit harsh and there will be a big shadow even in slow sync, but you can position yourself correctly and get rid of that. The red eye reduction works fine. There is some noticeable vignette in the images when you use flash. But then again, at this price range, it does a decent job. The maximum ISO advertised is 6400. But I would highly suggest that you use it within the 1600 or 1600 range. Here are a few samples showing different ISO levels. Till ISO 3200 the image would be usable even though there would be lack in clarity. But ISO 6400 or 6400 is a different story. Video When you look at the level of overexposure in videos, the photograph seems to be golden. Wind noise reduction is quite unsatisfactory even with wind reduction on. If you are planning to capture videos with a lot of movement, you must look elsewhere as the camera struggles to focus on fast motion. 
low light videos are not good either but if you are sitting at a well lit place and not moving fast then the camera can produce some decent footage the stabilization is much better than a lot of mobile phones and entry level dslrs zooming mid way while capturing video is possible but don't expect it to focus really well it simply can't so if you want to focus close go near the subject it will do a much better job that way to conclude the coolpix s7000 retails at a price of rupees 9500 and 226 dollars in the us for that price i wouldn't say it's a steal but it definitely is a decent camera if you're into capturing images only with minor family videos you can go ahead and get this if you wish to use it as a vlogging camera please don't even consider this if you're going to capture a lot of videos you should not buy this If you're looking for a budget camera under rupees 10,000 with photography as the main interest and occasional family videos, this is a good buy. It would have been a much better deal if the price was a bit lower, say to the tune of 8,500 or 200 dollars or maybe 190 dollars or something. That's my thought on the camera. That's it for this video. Hope you find it useful. Give a thumbs up if you loved this. Do check out other videos. Share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos. My Instagram, Twitter and Facebook are in the description below. Do follow me there. See you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a great time.